Hello, welcome back to chapter three of me reading the book I wrote when I was 11. It's called Bad News. Uh, and look, so far, it's been gripping. Honestly, it's been gripping. And I mean that in every sense of how 11-year-olds write. Um, you can go back and watch chapter one and two, and I'd recommend that because it really won't make a lot of sense without it. Also, this is being podcasted on my podcast, uh, Scotty Writes, which you can find on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, wherever you read podcasts, uh, <laughs> wherever you listen to podcasts. Um, the whole thing's already up there if you want to listen to it the whole way through. And also, more importantly, um, that's where I put up short stories that I write for Instagram on my Instagram account, Scotty Writes. This isn't like a promotion. I'm reading in the book I wrote when I was 11, and I hope you enjoy it. Chapter 3. It's called The Lead, spelled L-E-E-D, but I'm pretty sure it's L-E-A-D in context. This happens November 3rd, 2000. Um, uh, didn't point out. Last one happened November 1st, 2000. <clears throat> Good morning, it's Andy Mack for HH105 FM, 6 o'clock news. Boom! Now, this is a big boom because, as you can see, it takes up some two lines of the page. It's a big one. Burr, 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 burr. Hello. Hi, Scott, it's Ben. Oh, hi. What was that bang? I don't know, but I thought you might like to come down and investigate it with me. <laughs> ben is the local police officer, and I'm the local journalist, and we investigate crime together. Sure. Okay, I'll meet you at your place in 10 minutes. Okay, bye. See ya. I pushed the engage button and called work. Okay, now, this is key. There were no mobile phones at this time. And if there were, they were not iPhones. So, using a phone, I think I mean it's like a pick up off the receiver kind of phone, press the hang up button, which if you're under the age of 25, you won't understand. Haljan Hill 6, Jan speaking, how may I help? Yeah, Jan, it's Scott from upstairs, of course. I'm the senior journo, but I do need to point out who I am. Um, <clears throat> yeah, it's Scott from upstairs. Okay, hold on. Hi, it's Jacob, all day request. I think it's the radio, it's the whole music. Dan, hi Dan, it's Scott. I'm going with Ben to investigate a mysterious bang. Yeah, okay. Thanks. Bye. See ya. Okay, so I think that I feel the need to explain certain parts of my day to the reader. Okay. See ya. Just then a patrol car pulled up out front of my house. He's early, I thought, but I ran out in my PJs to find out what he was doing so early. Scott, got to go to a meeting, he said. Okay. I replied even though I felt like he was hiding something very big. So I got dressed and managed to find the house, and it was Rowan Whitefriss house. I wonder who did it, I thought to myself sarcastically. Then a woman's voice yelled, Oh, I'm so glad you're here. I looked up and saw the woman we interviewed yesterday, the neighbour. Oh, thank you, I needed to tell somebody, she said, gesturing with her hand, telling me to go towards her house. Just then, a man that was about five foot five walked across the road. The old lady burst into tears and screamed, He did it! He blew up the house! The man looked at her and said, Oh, shut up, you old fart. <laughs> Got her. He paused and looked at me. Yeah, I did it. Hey, you're the local journo, aren't you? He continued. I probably have billboards up around town. I don't even know. Yes, I answered. And would you do a camera interview? I questioned. Oh my gosh. <laughs> so this guy is getting about town, blowing things up, admitting to it. And I'm like, yeah, great to meet you, son. Will you do an interview for camera? This is a heck of an exclusive. Can you imagine the way we'd watermark that film? Guy that is a master criminal and is responsible for murder and mass destruction speaks exclusively. And to my surprise, he gave an immediate yes. Oh, easiest interview I've ever scored. I thought this was a good idea while Ben wasn't here. What? So we went down to the station and into one of what we call colour studio. It's basically a black room with different coloured lights in the roof. What we do is put the person we interview under a colour spotlight. Then we interview them. It just makes it look good. Okay, that doesn't exist in the TV station I work for now, just in case you're wondering. There's no... And also, we don't bring criminals that are known to have blown buildings up back 
to the TV station before alerting the police. Okay. Um... Um, I don't... Mr. Elontu Big Man? His name is James Galontu Big Man? Where were you two nights ago? With me girlfriend, Nicole Liverlock. Okay. Can she verify that? Yeah. So, why did you blow up Rowan Whiteris' house? Well, you see, recently Rowan has been acting strange. Like he used to love the garden... But like he just won't go out. He don't come to visit no more. And then I see them cops there. So I def really worried. So I go visit him. He's there. Fee times I try to visit. He never answered. So I don't blow up the place. When he's not home. It should scare those cops off. And then that woman can come live safely with me. Huh? I think he blew up the house because cops were snooping around and his friend wasn't there. And so he thought that was the right thing to do. Okay. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Cut! I yelled. Okay, would you like me to drive you home? Because Ben hasn't rung to say he's home yet. I asked him. Yeah, thanks, he replied. So I took him home, and about half an hour after that, Ben came to my house, so I told him what happened, and took him up to the station to show him the tape. Okay. Okay. This is all very strange, isn't it? Wow, I've never been in this part of the building before, you know, Ben said in a fake amazed voice, because I had a feeling he was nervous about something big. Yeah, it is pretty cool, I responded. Then we heard, Ben, done, out of his radio. Then he said, quick, we've got to go down to the resort. The kidnappers are there. How do you know there is more than one? I questioned him. I just do, he responded. What does done mean? Um, done, on near Esplanade, and our Esplanade is the resort. Right, I'm confused now that I knew Ben, I'm confused now that I knew Ben was lying. Okay, this, I think I must have been tired when I wrote this chapter because it is a mess. So, we went down to the resort and it turned out it was a false clue just to save someone. But who... Someone who did a kidnapping at Jamok Street, which is on the other side of town. Okay, we have been lied to. Um, so, someone's taken us to the other side of town so they can do a kidnapping. Very clever. I went back to the station and put together the story and went home. I woke up at nine because I was granted a holiday and I would have slept a lot longer if the phone hadn't have woken me up. I mean, in the midst of all of this, investigating a crime with a cop, meeting a guy who's blowing up houses to save his friend, um, I just took a quick holiday. I mean, them's the breaks of journalism. Hello. Hi, Scott. It's your only cousin called Mel. Okay. Oh, would you give that up? I screamed down the receiver, right, because she's making a dad joke. I'm your only cousin called Mel. <laughs> okay, okay, she said as if backing off. Anyway, I'm in town to investigate some claims about the cops being lazy with this kidnapping thing. And I thought we could catch up. Yeah, okay. We organised a time to meet. Okay, this is very weird. Hi, Scott, cousin journalist. I'm in town to investigate corruption with the police. By the way, one of your best mates is that cop. Let's grab a coffee sometime. That's the end of chapter three. But that is what we call a cliffhanger. Because at this point, we're starting to get sus on Ben the cop. And now, there's someone in town to investigate cops. Cliffhanger. Stick around. The next video will be out in a couple of days. Or you can just hear what happens next right now on the podcast. Search Scotty Writes on Apple Podcasts or Spotify. Um... I'm excited for chapter four.